Welcome to Let Me Ask You This. I'm your host, Tom. Thank you for joining me while I interview individuals about their life and their experience. If you like this show, please make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome to episode 25 of Let Me Ask You This. Today, I have Benji. Me and Benji, we met basic training back in 2017. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a flight, crazy flight. Flight 215. 215. Yeah. Foot hogs. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I remember people would, like, tell horror stories about us, and then we just, like, showed them it was true. It was... Yeah. Dude, the gas chamber was my favorite part about basic. Like, not even kidding. Uh, what was my favorite part? Oh man, that shit was like at first, like I say, like a, like a couple months after basic, it was a blur, and I really started thinking back to it, dude. We had a lot of fun, a lot of stupid shit, and but so much trouble. Yeah. Oh, and when we were we were up past curfew, and that one fucking MTI came in. And I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna have to answer for this in the morning. Like, I was so mad. <laughs> it's funny, but I was so mad at this time. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. it's great to look back on now and just like how much trouble we got in and what we thought like how much consequence it would be. Some people actually yeah. got in trouble and they got out. But yeah, yeah that was basically a crazy time. Where'd you go for tech school? I went to Shepherd. I was there. So I was there for, I was there for one thing. Uh, I think it was like, I even forgot, I forgot what I was there for at first. I think it was like, e, no. Oh, avionics. Okay. I was there for yeah. avionics for the F-35s, dude. And I, I don't know, I, I didn't get, like grasp the concept of like electricity at first. So I got washed out of that. And then I ended up, uh, <laughs> I ended up becoming like a, like a maintenance, like, like scheduler right now that's what i am right now and that's what i've been doing so far for the past like mm -hmm. four years so not bad no that's a good deal dude it's it gives me a lot of time to like focus on other things that i actually want to do so that's a good deal blessing in disguise that's what people call it i would say that so i i was also at shepherd and um I was, I went there for HVAC. I was on the C side of it. So I yeah. was on like the completely opposite side of the, the base. Opposite yeah. Side, yeah. yeah. And that base was huge. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but I was there for 99 days and then I got injured. So I got, I got stuck there longer. Yeah. Yep. And then I went to Scott. Over in um, Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. It was 20 minutes east of st louis and like four hours south of chicago oh, no kidding so you're yeah. right, right between two big cities yeah, yeah I mean, that that was fun yeah i ended up here in texas i didn't go too far from shepherd no you didn't <laughs> uh no I, I think about it i'm just like it is what it is uh, there's better things coming so i don't really i don't really think about it too much I see that you're flying though. You're you're living out your dream of becoming a pilot. Yeah, man. Um, I'm trying. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely it's definitely a grind. Um, but um, that uh, that program, the the program that you saw me doing, uh, I posted the pictures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually came through an email. I don't know if you remember it, but my purrs, um, they pushed out an email. Yep. Saying that um, that they had. Uh, basically calling for a nomination and I put in my application I got an, uh, an endorsement from my commander at the time and uh yeah I got picked up for it uh say about a couple months ago like, like two months ago and yeah I just got back from it last Saturday oh that's amazing yeah man so what what does that entail like can that take you anywhere to become a pilot in the future yeah, so um, for those that don't know, uh, to commission to be a pilot, you have to take your AFOQT, your Air Force Officer Qualifying Test, Qualification Test, 
And then you have to take a separate test called the TBAS, the uh, test for basic aviation skills. And um, once you take those two tests, it creates a score, basically uh, generating on a, on, a, on a scale what kind of, uh, not what kind of pilot, but uh, what percentile, kind of, it's like a percentile test. Okay. Oh so, yeah, you get your score and um, you start your application to you submit your package for OTS. And then um, you, you put that in and, and you get to go. So that program basically gave me flat hours, um, which helps your uh, pick some score, which is basically a score to kind of determine what, how your washout rate in uh, pilot training or something like that, how successful you'd be in pilot training. So it gives you like a pick some score. Uh, so that- Oh, that's scary. Program, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that, <laughs> so it, honestly, the score has nothing to do with like anything because it's just a whole bunch of numbers they've taken over the years. And then they determine like, oh, people in this category wash out this fast or don't wash out this down the third. So um, it doesn't mean anything. I think if you have the drive in the will to get through it, you'll, you'll get through it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that program, all it did was kind of, exposed me a little bit more to flight and uh helped me gain more hours so the more flight hours you have the higher your pitching score goes um and yeah it let me meet some great people and uh build some connections and stuff like that so it was a, it was a good deal it's amazing see i think that was one of my most like favorite thing about the military is having all these opportunities to meet all these amazing people yeah and so like i went to a training in wisconsin and I learned all about these chillers. I don't work on them anymore, but like I, I had a great time learning how they were like, that's what I find fun. I went to a factory yeah. to see how this chiller was made. It was the coolest thing ever because it's what I like doing. Is it, yeah. And so I wouldn't have had that opportunity if it wasn't for the military. So is that, that's, what you're, that's what you're doing now, right? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still doing HVAC. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I love it. It's it's something new almost every day. Um, it's a puzzle. It's I'm not sitting behind a desk all day. And yeah, I, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, I can't. I I can sit behind a desk for like two or three hours, but then after that, I get fidgety, and then yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not focusing anymore. Right. You got to you got to do something. Got to do something. Mm -hmm. Got to do something. No, I feel you. Definitely feel you on that one. Yeah. Because right now, like my my job, my job right now is is basically flying a desk, and yeah. um, like so, I, sometimes I gotta get up and I'm I, like I gotta walk around, I gotta do something, I gotta go talk do to you, maintainers and stuff like that. Do you so. use fidget spinners or anything? I don't, uh, because I did at one point and it became so addicting, I would lose <laughs> track of what I'm doing just messing with them. So now I just kind of like get up, walk around, and talk to people and come back and then get up, walk around, talk to people. It's a vicious cycle of not trying to lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, my my wife, she she sits at a desk all day and she loses her mind. That's why she's not here right now. Right. She's not here because I'm doing this. She's not here because she already sat all day. And <laughs> she doesn't want to. And it's funny because I live the opposite life i'm on my feet most of the day i'm always right. going i'm outside so like during the summer i don't want to be outside after work because i was outside all day i'm tired and she's like let's go to the beach and i'm just like i want to die this is <laughs> terrible it's so hot it's so hot <laughs> yeah and like this summer we didn't have like a real ac and it's funny yeah. because i've been to like people's houses and they've like we'd be like oh you'll be out without ac for a couple of days and they're like, how does anybody live without AC? And I'm like, well, what I do. <laughs> and, but, and like, I give them like sound advice to yeah. because they still have like a fan and stuff. And I'm like, turn your fan on on your unit. It'll feel like there's a breeze. It will feel yeah. cooler. And so it's just like little tips like that, that people don't know about. And it's, it's funny just to see how people's world like change in a hot seat because they don't have AC. Right. Um, heat, I understand. If somebody was like, how am I going to live without heat? I wouldn't be like, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, man. AC yeah. is just a freak. It's a convenient. Not, it's just convenient. That's all it is. It's not like yeah. a necessity if you really think about it. I mean, yes, you can die from over. If you're here in Texas in the middle of freaking July, yes, you can die from heat. But is it, is it too crazy? It has to be like 
like 150 degrees and you're sitting in that for like hours. Yeah. I feel like that's the only way you're going to die, but it's a convenience. But yeah, even now it's still kind of hot and it's what is it like about to be October? It's still like oh, man, I don't I don't think it broke 70 today. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it got it, it got as cold as 42 last night. I, I left my windows open on accident. <laughs> and I woke up and it was like 55 in my house and I was freezing. Yeah. I was so mad. <laughs> you yeah. have hardwood floor? Huh? You have hardwood floor? Yeah, hardwood floor. No. That's, that's no the worst. It needs yeah. to step on the cold ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no carpet. And then my, it's even worse because my kitchen is tile. Yeah. Ooh. So that's even colder than hardwood. <laughs> I, I wear clocks though. I have I have inside clocks and outside clocks. Smart man. Smart uh, my man. For, for the longest time, I would hate on clocks because I thought they were the ugliest thing ever. Yeah. And then I started hanging out with my wife's cousin more, and she wears clocks all the time. Yeah. And she was like, "I'll buy you a pair." And so she bought me a pair, and I was like, "Okay, these aren't bad." And I was like, "I'm just gonna wear them around my house because I don't want to get like, I don't wear socks at home." But yeah. I don't like walking around barefoot. Yeah, no, I feel you. I'm the same yeah. way. Same way. Oh. And so it's they're convenient. It's great. And then I started wearing them out, and I was like, I can't wear my inside shoes out. So I got another. Now you got, now you got to go buy another pair. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife actually bought me a pair, uh, just randomly because she was like, "Here you go, here's a present." And I was like, "Oh, you're so sweet." Cycle. Now you're gonna. Now you're gonna need. Uh, now you're gonna need going out Crocs. Like I mean, like. To like like fancy, yeah. yeah like fancy Crocs that look like sh- uh, fancy shoes. A little yeah. Noise. Oh, I have a wedding. Grab the Crocs. Yeah, need wedding Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if anybody showed up to a wedding in Crocs, I'd pay them. I mean, yeah. You, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could do like, <laughs> like you get them custom made. Have like the hard, like the bottom, hard bottom. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh man, that'd be crazy. Are you a Are you an actual sneakerhead? Am I a sneakerhead? Yeah. I do not claim to be, but I will I will drop some money on some shoes if I like the shoe. I won't just go buy a shoe just for random. Like, oh, I got to have this because it just came out. If I think it looks ugly, I'm not going to buy it. That's just how I am. If I think a shoe looks ugly, I'm not buying it. Uh, so, but there's people. Go ahead. So the next question is, so if you buy them, do you wear them? Oh, yeah. I'm not, yeah fucking, okay. I'm not keeping them in a fucking box. Now, depending on the shoe and how much I pay for them, depends on how much I wear them. But I'm not going to, like, and how much and where I wear them. But I'm not going to freaking, not keeping them in a box and just let them sit in my closet. I'm going to wear them. <laughs> Some people do that. It's crazy. They just, like, buy these shoes and they just keep them in boxes. And they're like, man, they're worth money. And it's just, like, sell them or wear them? I don't know. So what's what's gonna happen? It's funny you say that because I was telling somebody this. What's gonna happen? Because the sneaker game, um, it it's just like anything else. It comes in circles. Back yeah. in the day, it wasn't that popular. Now it's popular. Eventually, it won't be popular again. So when people with all this, all these shoes, just piled up, and the value of them drops from whatever they are now to a couple bucks, like fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, you're gonna be really upset. It'll take a while, but. It's going to come full circle again, just like anything else. So, Yeah, kind of. Well, there's like, it's almost like comics, but there's some people in comics that will forever stay that much. Like, number one, Spider-Man signed by Stan Lee, mint condition. That's oh, I always... Wouldn't that. I wouldn't do that wrong. Yeah. Like, that's... I've, I've looked, and... It's too much. It's like almost a house payment. I can't, I can't yeah, do that. I wouldn't. It's terrible. I wouldn't take it out the frame. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even look at it. Nope. <laughs> I'll just put it somewhere. But uh, that's like the uh, the holographic Charizard card. Oh that, yeah. That people have now that they had ever since they were a kid, and now they're older, and the thing's worth like sixty grand. Mhm. Yeah. Now I was. They have a bunch of documentaries on Hulu. I think it is. Yeah. Um about like the toys i think the toys that made us is on netflix um that one's interesting it goes back to like all of our childhood toys right and i think it i think it starts in the 80s 80s or late early 90s 
yeah eight late 80s early 90s somewhere that time frame um but i just finished the one called oh man it was about nickelodeon it was on hulu uh that one was amazing i learned so much about nickelodeon that i did not know um <laughs> Like when Nickelodeon first came out, it was it was run by a female. The CEO yeah. was a female. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, especially in that time. Yep. And the first like hit TV show, they actually bought it from a different country. Like it wasn't even an American TV show. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah. That's a, yeah. It's like the little the little the little crap you don't know about. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. These, some of these, these these toys, like um. Which one? I can't remember the name. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Damn, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank right now. I can't think. <laughs> Dang, I can't think right now. But yeah, like I guess saying, man, it's crazy. Like the, the little, the little stuff that made these companies what they are today. Like, like Nickelodeon. Like, I, I love Nickelodeon. Would I have known that it was ran by a female? What was it? 20, 25 years ago? No. Yeah, 25 yeah. years. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm old. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not, we're getting out there. <laughs> oh, man. But, but like, also, like, with Disney. Di- Disney's a terrible story because, well, <laughs> Disney was a terrible person. He was a terrible person. Made good cartoons. Yeah. Oh, he made amazing cartoons. And it's it's amazing how he made them because I don't know how people don't know this today. But like how they drew cartoons back then, they would reuse the animations. So oh, really? you didn't I know that? I, I, that one I did not know. I did not. Oh know shit! All right. So so I I thought that was like known because it was cheap. It was so like um, the Jungle Book. Uh, yeah. If you match it up, I think it's Way with the like poop? yeah, and the dancing. Yeah, it's, it's the, the same, same dance. Okay, I've seen that. I, yeah. I didn't know it was like universe, like they would use it that much. I just thought it yep. was a coincidence, not a coincidence, but like they were lazy that clip. <laughs> no, I thought they were lazy. No, they, they did it with almost all of their movie. It's it's ingenious because it's so cost, like you save so much money not having yeah. to redraw all of this. Right, right, right. And a lot of people didn't know that apparently. Hmm. So I'm spreading the word that <laughs> that Disney, Disney was. Cheapskates. <laughs> oh yeah, Andy hated women. That was dude. Hey, some of these documentaries that come out about him are crazy. Yeah, there's not much you can say about him though, because in my opinion, Disney runs like half the world. Oh my, yeah. So, um, and a lot of these platforms, like media platforms, are Disney owned. So. I really can't say much about someone who like owns that much of the world because they did it. You know what I mean? Now they're not just be like a hater, but he was a terrible person, but a smart, terrible person. I mean, he doesn't, he didn't make it own half the world. He just kind of started this. Yeah. Whole thing. Disney was a terrible person. The company that it is today isn't all that great either, but what they do is crazy. It's ingenious, man. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's actually modern day monopoly. (laughs) Yeah, it all, all major corporations like that, yeah. Google, Apple. I don't think Apple actually. Apple doesn't have a monopoly on anything, but Google. Google which Amazon. doesn't. Yeah, I don't know what Google doesn't own. Yeah, and then Amazon, Jeff Bezos, running the freaking world. That's crazy to me. Yo, don't don't get me started on conspiracy theories. I can go, I can go. So when I first started this podcast, I made it conspiracy theories because I've always wanted to do a podcast. It was during COVID. I had nothing else to do. Right. And what could I talk about by myself? Conspiracy theories. Right. And so I I've always been big into conspiracy theories. I just don't talk about them because People think if you talk about conspiracy theories, you're crazy. Right. And it's like, I don't talk about conspiracy theories because I believe in them. <laughs> I talk I about believe, conspiracy theories I definitely because believe, they're crazy. I believe in the, like some of them. Some of them I hear, I'm just like, well, it could be true because it's, a, you know, but I don't know. 
Uh, like, like the whole like Epstein didn't kill himself. I believe that conspiracy theory, but cold heartedly. As but, that that whole thing is just like that. That's a shit show. Like that one. If you sit down, you 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 look at some of these like documentaries. You're just like it could. It's possible. It's like really possible. <laughs> like all this stuff. Yep. And then the my my favorite one is how Obama and Hillary they suck the blood of babies. And like, and like I, I would, and like I talk about, and like I would talk about this stuff because look at your reaction, it's crazy. Like, who sucks the blood of baby? It's idiotic. And people are like, oh, I can't believe you believe that. And it's like, I don't. Like at the beginning of every episode, me yeah. and my buddy would say, hey, we don't like we're not putting our stance on this. We're just telling you about these conspiracy theories. Right. They're crazy. Yeah, a lot of them are far left, but a lot of them are funny. And then sometimes you got to sit there and it's like, after you finish saying like, oh, this is, this is, this can't be true. This, that, and the third. You sit there and go, well, what if it is? And yeah, that's what, what if makes, it is? That's, that's what makes conspiracy theories like pretty fun. That's, that's what I like about them. Have you, have you seen the documentary on Netflix about Flat Earth? No. And, and here's... So here's here's the crappy part about flat Earth and and it being a sphere. You got to take what people tell you because you've never been to space. You don't know what the hell the Earth looks like. Yeah, so exactly. You got to you got to listen to what people are telling you. So it's like it's I don't. I think it's a ball. Well, <laughs> so I, I think it's a globe. I, I I think it's a globe. But the what, while I was watching this documentary, it was they didn't explain anything deep enough for you to actually think about it. Mm-hmm. And so it made sense. Everything they said, it was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> because they're not like fully, so they were like, oh, if we put eight posts up throughout like a certain, uh, three posts up throughout a certain distance and we shine a laser, if it hits it through each point, that means the earth is flat. And you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. That, that's logical but you're like wait a minute elevation exists hills <laughs> exist <laughs> but like you you think about this and you're like oh this this is logical yeah because you're not fully thinking it through mm-hmm. and it's just like that's oh, how they I, get that's how they get people yeah and people that don't they, like to think, to think it through they get them like that so and so i'm sitting here watching this documentary and at first that's my thought i'm like oh this is logical. Okay, I want to see how this plays out. And then, like, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a second. You're giving me too much time to think. Like, this wouldn't work. <laughs> and then at the end, they... Oh, man. I'm, I'm not going to spoil it. It was hilarious. The, the ending was my... Every movie should end like this. Like, <laughs> it was... It was, like... The best thing I could say was the, the good guy lost. That That... It was... It, it was hilarious. It, it was great. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay, now, now I see what you're talking about. The good guy never loses. Uh, yeah. It, I, I love movies where good guys don't win. It's it's different. And it's, it's different. not even like... But, well, it'll piss you off because you, you were so invested in the good guy and he, like, died or, lo- or loses. But it still makes for a good movie. Not your Like Rocky. Movie. Look at Rocky. Yeah. The, the good. I mean... They did it a little too many times. Yeah. Uh, all, all of the Rocky series, even the the Creed ones. Mm-hmm. I didn't like Creed, and people were like, "Oh, you you." People actually called me racist because I didn't like Creed. It, it was it was so weird, and I was like, "Dude, if I wanted to watch a movie like that, I just watch Rocky because it was the same thing." It's the same concept. Like I watched, I didn't watch the second one because of, I felt it would be the same as the first one. Uh, that, that's same thing. I'll give a first movie a chance, mm. but if if it's just like all the other ones, no, nah, I'm I'm all set. Yeah, it's a it's your typical boxing movie. Like uh, my bo- my favorite boxing movie um, is uh, what's it called? <laughs> is it Cinderella Man? I think it's Cinderella Man. Yeah. I gotta look it up. I don't even remember the actor uh, in it, but oh gosh, he was a great fight. Okay, you might you might have seen it. He was he was a super good fighter. Uh, he lost everything. It uh, sounds like Cinderella, man. 
Okay, 50 cents in it. Oh, Cinderella man. And then he comes back in the end and he wins. All right. Yep. No, 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 no. I've seen Cinderella Man, and that's a good one too. Uh, <laughs> that's not Cinderella. Oh, now, now I'm highly invested in finding the title. You keep going because I'm looking at the fucking title. Yo, so an another good fighting movie. Since we're on this, uh, The Warrior with Tom Hardy, I believe. I believe Tom Hardy is in it. They're, they're UFC fighters. They're brothers. One's a teacher, and one's like an actual fighter. Like they both them. fight. Oh man, it's good. Um, Tom Hardy rips a like a door off a tank. It, it was crazy. Yeah, it, it was so weird because he was in the army or the Marines. He he was in the military. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, but that that was a great movie. Fight Club. South Park. Talk about fight. South Park. I like that movie. I really like that movie. That's the movie I was talking about. I don't think about. I've seen that one. That's the one with damn it, what's his name? <laughs> I just added up. Uh I'm terrible with names. No, me too. So this probably won't even help. <laughs> uh Aren't they supposed to show me the cast? <laughs> oh, it's Jake Gyllenhaal is in it, and um, okay, uh, Fifty Cent's in it as well. The the rapper and they uh, I didn't think there was any other Fifty Cent. Yeah, most people don't know. That's why I have to. I gotta. I gotta elaborate. Um, Wait, what do you mean? Most people don't know. There's a lot of people that just don't know, <laughs> like like musicians and and and. So like 50 cent is like i don't even like really listen to rap all that much but you, you would you would think right it's just like <laughs> it's just like that uh with the disney use reusing uh images you would think people know this but they don't so it's like well it's not even like tupac biggie 50 cent eminem like they were just icons. big name yeah icons, Dr. Big Dre. Icon. yep i don't know it's weird Culture is so weird, especially American culture. Yeah, man, people don't get out much. <laughs> That's you don't even have to get out anymore. Like, yeah. you can, oh, yeah, you can't right. <laughs> yeah. You got, got your phone. You just stare at your phone all day, but there, there, there's people. <laughs> there's people out there. Yeah. So, talking about like getting out and stuff, one, and this is why I've changed my podcast from mm -hmm. conspiracy theories to talking to people yeah. because one, I want to get better at talking to people right. and two i've learned that life isn't just about my experience right my experience is tied into everybody else's experience and i can learn from your experience true and so yeah. so like for example i've learned that the air force has programs to help airmen go through pilot school and get more fly time or air time yeah. Heck yeah, and I, I didn't know that before. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's fairly new. It's, it's almost like a year and a half old, the, the program. So it's fairly new. So I'm, I think I'm, I was in class number four. That's how new it there is. There you go. Yeah, so. Man, so you're a guinea pig still. I'm a test. I'm a test. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a test subject. Yeah. Um, but like, man, like I said, man, that, 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 that course is a super good um what i got a question for you what drove your decision to get out um so it was medical uh, i couldn't deploy again uh high anxiety i was having stomach issues um uh you know what? i seen that post i did see that post yeah so like i'm, I'm very open about it because yeah. i it drove me to be very open about mental health and oh, yeah. especially I'm, I'm big on especially man. men men's mental health of, Super above big. everything Super because big. a lot of men were raised that you don't show feeling you don't like a man is a man oh, and yeah. you can show feeling and still be manly i can sit here and cry and punch you in the face and it's going to hurt as much as if i wasn't crying right like it but it doesn't matter and it it, it bothers so me go ahead no, so, so I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because um, I think in today's age, I think we are, it's being talked about more, which I like, and it's getting recognized more on a larger scale as well. And it's happening more in smaller conversations, which is mostly important. So uh, 
uh, for folks like you that, you know, take the time out to actually talk about it and be open about it. You don't find many people like that because once you start talking about, let's say mental health in the military, now, now what, like, you know, you, you, there's a stigma around mental health, right? In the military. Yeah. It's, it sucks, but there's a stigma around. And so when, before I, before I deployed, I was feeling a little depressed mm -hmm. and I was talking to the staff sergeant who went through mental health and stuff. And I was like, look, I, I want to talk to mental health. I'm a little depressed, but I don't want to talk to them before my deployment. Like, will it, fuck, will, will, will it mess anything up if I like talk to them? And he was like, he, he gave me like really sound advice. And he did like, then he made sure I was completely okay. That like, I wasn't trying to kill myself or anything. I was like, nope, I'm just depressed. Like I'm, I'm away from my family. It's around right. the holidays. I'm deploying like right around the holidays. Right. And then, you know, I deployed and coming back, my, my deployment was wonderful. I love my deployment, but it was, it was how my brain handled my deployment because I went to a combat zone. That's how everything kind of transpired. So I got back and they took away my means of protections and I was told every day for six months that I was going to get attacked. And so it was in my head that I was going to get attacked and always be ready. Right. And so when I got back, I scored extremely high on the PTSD anxiety test because I was like, I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, right. I want, I want help. And you know, it took them a little bit to like reach out to me. And when I got back, I waited two or three months before I actually like reached out to them. And what made me do it, my wife was like, this is affecting our marriage. And I was like, I, right, I need to, I need to fix this. This isn't good. <laughs> and oh man, why? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she helped. She got me to get better. So I'm not mad at her. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was great. They, and then I became a really big advocate for mental health. Every time we did wingman day or whatever, we, whatever it was called even prime beef day it's something ce does for training once every thursday once a month once a month um at the end i would be like hey guys like just so you know mental health's there uh so a lot of people don't know this in the military i'm going to say this because you are in the military so if you share this they can people in the military can hear it and i still have people in the military that listen Talking to mental health about depression, anxiety doesn't ruin your top security, top secret clearance. It doesn't. What ruins it is if you have money issues and you should get help if you have these issues. Like mm -hmm. you should get help if you have any of these issues. But going somewhere to talk to them because you're depressed, you have anxiety, suicide, that's not going to take away your clearance. You're, you're safe. They're there to help you. They help me. You know, it's crazy, man. It's um, unfortunately, as, as much as people preach that, uh, uh, sadly, people don't believe it um, and until people start believing it and actually witnessing people's other people's testimonies that like, you know, like, so, for instance, let's say a pilot a pilot wasn't doing so well, very depressed, right? They have the mm -hmm. highest, of the highest clearance. Most of them. I think actually all of them have the highest of the highest you can get. So then he goes in, he goes to mental health. His biggest fear is him losing his wings, right? Yeah. And people forget, man, you are more than the military. You really mm -hmm. are. You're so much more than the military. You're an actual human being. So once you take this uniform off, you still have to live your life, right? So if you don't get the help that you um, so desperately need, um, trust and believe that you, you, probably, you probably won't make it very far. Um, you'll always be stuck in that vicious cycle of um, your, your, I don't want to call it a disease, but whatever you're going through, right? So you'll always be stuck in that cycle. Um, so yeah, until people get away from that stigma, especially in the military that, you know, this would cost you my career, it can cost you your life if you really think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so.
a career. And in all honesty, if if you were to lose your job, if you would lose your job in the military, they'd replace you within a matter of matter of weeks, right? You're a number, like you're a number. You're a number to the military. If you really think about it, you're a number. Yeah. Um, you're an employee. Uh, and they, you can all, you're very replaceable. No matter how secure you think your job is, you're extremely replaceable and they will replace you, right? But you still have to go home to, uh, say you have a family, a wife, kids, you still got to go home and live your life, right? So those are the things you can't replace. Your job is easily replaceable. If I don't, if I feel like tomorrow I wake up and I'm, I'm done with the military, um, when, whenever my next reenlistment comes around, if I'm still feeling that way, I'm done with the military because the military is just a job. Yeah. I still have to live my life. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. people don't understand that. Cause like for me, um, I'm actually going through my own, my own, my own thing right now. Uh uh right now. And it's it's affecting my marriage, right? So and my marriage is like extremely new. It's like fairly new. Uh, I'd say like 10 months new. Granted, I've been with her for four years before then. Yeah. Um, and but the shitty part about it, um, I actually dislike telling it, but because I say it so much, um, she had deployed last year for about six months, and she got mm-hmm. home around November time frame ish. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time we were still dating, um, she got orders to uh, Osan, Osan, Korea. Yeah. Uh, right after that, and. I mean, I didn't handle that news pretty, I didn't handle it well, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I want to be with my girlfriend at the time. Um, then um, she lost those orders for some reasons that were out of her control. So we were good. We were, we were good. So we're going to Thanksgiving. This is like a, a week or two after we get back. We, we go to Thanksgiving to her parents' house. Um, I said, I've already had in my head for the last year that I was going to marry her. I just didn't know when, right? Yeah. So, we get to her parents' house. I asked for permission to marry her from uh, from both her parents. And then um, I get a phone call like a day after Thanksgiving saying, hey, you got to early deploy, like a month and a half early. I'm like, fuck. All right. So I get that phone call and, you know, it's November like 26. She's like, hey, you got to early deploy uh this that and the third but you got a quarantine because we're at middle covid you got a quarantine up until it's time to leave or like a day before it's time to leave i'm like oh fuck whatever so we get married me and her get married december 7th pearl harbor day it wasn't the best day to get married but we got married <laughs> <laughs> we got married and then i leave two days later i'm gone she gets her orders back to osan so she leaves for Osan in April of this year. She left in like April or March or something like that. Yeah. And I get back in May. So I had, I didn't even see her. So we were ba- like, we were married for two days and then basically separated for 10 months. She comes home on Friday, but for mid tour. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. But like I said, uh, we didn't even get a chance to be married and uh, I didn't realize this, but being in a relationship and being married are two separate things. Oh yes. 100%. No matter how no matter how long you've been with that person, it is two yep. separate things. It is it is complete opposites. No one prepares mm-hmm. you for that shit. No one, no one, no one gives you a fucking book. Uh <laughs> Yo, so you know, you know what was terrible for me? So yeah. before me and my wife got married, we I lived with my sister before I joined the military. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And she didn't live with us, but like she was there a lot. It was almost like they, she lived there, but we never lived together until we got married after after tech school. So I went through basic and tech school. I was gone for seven months, eight months without seeing her, got married, and then went back to tech school because I was stuck there. And then she came out like five months later and then we lived together. Like for the first time, like in a totally different state. It it was a total. It's it's so freaking sideways, man. And then then you deploy, uh, like you get used uh, to living with somebody and then you deploy and you get used to living by yourself, taking like not worrying about taking out the garbage, not worrying about doing the dishes. And then you get back and it's just like, 
you're not used to doing this stuff again. <laughs> and then your spouse is like, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, <laughs> sorry. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not on my deployment anymore. I have to do stuff. I can't just sit in the MWR and watch TV all day. Man. But that, all that, afternoon. That's insane, dude. Because I, I deployed to Djibouti, man. And it was... Uh, we Yo, had- Djibouti was crazy. <laughs> so for us, for me, dude, it sucked. Like, because it, it was during COVID. There wasn't anything you can do. Yeah, uh, and we were in the middle of a, a presidential support mission, moving stuff all over Africa and moving stuff out of Africa and moving crap to it was it was crazy. It's yeah. in the news. That's why I could talk about it, but it was crazy. Um, it was ridiculous. But on like on top of that, like back to being married, man. It like that Djibouti deployment. I didn't I didn't worry about anything. Like so when she like left and all this stuff, like I was I was fine because I was working. Right, I'm working like 13 hours a day. It's mm-hmm. not much I can do to think about except work work yeah. work work and just worry about myself okay she's good I'm happy that she's happy she, I'm happy she's doing whatever she's doing all I'm focused on is work and just getting the hell out of here all right so yeah <laughs> and then um I get back and um a couple uh like a month month and a half that's when it really got bad like arguments started getting bad because she's gone at this point she's in yeah. and I'm here by myself and I'm you know, I, I already knew I wasn't coming back to see her. I, knew, I already knew she wouldn't be here when I land mm-hmm. uh, back on uh, back at Dias. But I don't know why I still felt like she she like, was waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It was it was probably the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. Seeing like everyone else hugging and and kissing and crying and this, that, and the third, and I'm just walking to my car. Yeah, it's different if you're single and you're just walking to your car, right? But if you have someone, but they're just not there, not because they don't want to be there, but they just can't be there, it's still yeah. it's a terrible feeling, dude. Oh, yeah, I, I'm happy my I, I'm happy my wife picked me up after my deployment. It felt um, great, right? Yeah. Because they were going to have so because because of the way I left Af the the way I left Africa, um, I. Uh, I was, I got medivac from Kenya to Djibouti. Mm -hmm. Um, We thought I had a hernia. Um, Like two or three days before I I was stupid and I moved it like a whole condenser by myself. And then the next day I noticed a lump and I was like, "Uh uh-oh. And so like I went to the doctor and I was like, hey, mage, uh, I think I have a hernia. And like it hurt, like it hurt to walk. Yeah, and then they were like okay we'll give it a day or two day or two comes by and it gets bigger and it hurts yeah and I'm like all right like this hurts and then as this is going on somebody broke a tv in the MWR Mm. and so the commando walks up to me and he's like hey so how'd you get that hernia and I was like why like like I, I saw instantly what happened. Like yeah. I'm not stupid, and I was like, "It's that's a medical question. Can, like why why are you asking me this?" Yeah. But I said it like in an like a senior am into a commander way, yeah. and he was like, "Oh, uh, because I think that you broke the TV," and I was like, "Excuse me, <laughs> I like I I've been working like." <laughs> this happened on a Friday. When did the TV break? He was like, Sunday. I was like, sweet. Go tell the doc that you think I did that so he can tell you. I saw him on Saturday about a lump. Yeah. And he was like, oh. Uh, and I was like, yeah. Like, like, he was like <laughs> threatening an article and stuff. It was terrible. And, and then they medivaced me to uh, Djibouti. Yeah. That was a terrible flight. The, the plane was not even like bigger than my living room. It fit like five people on it. Yeah. And they like strapped me into like a like a bed. And I was like, yo, I'm not dying. Like I just <laughs> have a hernia. I'm okay. And like they transferred me so fast because it was getting so big and they didn't have means to yeah, yeah. fix me out there. I was at a bare base. Like yeah. it was it was fun. But, and then I got to Djibouti and they took like CAT scans and stuff. And they were like, yo, that's a lymph node. Yeah. And I'm like, what's that? 
that's cool. I was like, oh, sweet. So like no surgery, that's amazing. And they're like, no, it's a lymph node. And I was like, what's that? And they're like, oh, you have a disease. And I was like, oh, okay, so what is it? And they're like, we don't know. And I'm just like, excuse me? And they were like, take these antibiotics. And I was like, what do they do? No, 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 it was antibiotics. Like it was real antibiotics. And I was like, what do they do? And they're like, fight off diseases. And I was like, you know what? Never mind. I'm not going to play this game, whatever. And so I just, I just took these pills that these random Navy officer gave me. And I was just like, let's hope for the best. Then two right. days later, my lymph node went down. I could walk like without yeah. limping. And I walked up to the hospital. I was like, Hey, let me get like a bucket of those because it worked. Yeah. And then they were like, Oh, your chalk's on your way home. Like they're flying in like next week. So we're not going to fly you back out there. And so I hung out in Djibouti for like three months or two months. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Djibouti, it looked fun. Um, like after we left, that's when they kind of loosened up a lot of the restrictions. Um, that but, sucks. Yeah, yeah but it, it's all good. Do you ever get surgery on it on your, on your lymph node or try to get that taken care of? Or it just went uh, it, down? It, it, it went down. It was perfectly fine. That's, every that's now and again like it'll pop up but then it'll just like go down and it's just like right. all right that's cool yeah. it's weird if it's not an issue i think you're good so, but, yeah. yeah but yeah, but yeah. My, my first interview was in Djibouti. really yeah for, for my podcast it was oh, with yeah. ricky simmons a ufc fighter they were doing a toy oh, yeah, yeah it, it was really cool he had a mullet <laughs> big mullet yeah yeah, that, man, we, that was cool. We didn't get any of that in Djibouti, man. COVID really jacked up a lot of stuff and out there. And um, when we got back, I think like maybe like two or three days after we left or whatever, that's when they started loosening reg- like stuff up. And you could drink again, you can go off base again, you can start doing stuff. So wait, they stopped drinking because of COVID? Yeah, you couldn't go to the bars or anything like that. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Uh, actually. Yeah, no, yeah, the bars are closed down because, you know, you have the locals out there that don't really have access to stuff and proper hygiene and stuff like that. So it, it, yeah. kind of made, it made it um, not worse, but actually it didn't make it worse. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that stuff. But uh, yeah, Djibouti wasn't bad, man. Like I said, it just sucked come, not coming home to to my wife and then like kind of dealing with what we're dealing with now. Uh I think I think we'll be okay. Actually, I'm almost I'm sure we'll be okay, but it sucks that we have to deal with the arguing at this phase in our in our marriage without even being married. Really, like we 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 haven't even been together married. We've been together in a relationship, but man, those things are different. So, uh, um, yeah. I, I'm hopeful, yeah, I'm I'm hopeful, and I think it'll it'll be all right. I'm just I'm happy to see her in in two days. So, yeah, I will say everything is a learning curve like nobody can prepare you for marriage nobody and it's terrible being apart like because she's not with you on your day-to-day as she is like if she lives with you and so you're sitting there and you're texting words get misconstrued oh my god yeah and it's like are you mad at me it's like no why would i be mad at you and then they get annoyed that you're asking if you're mad at the and it's just like it's t- texting is the best but worst invention ever. And so, yeah, I even like I told my wife because I haven't talked to her since Sunday, uh, just because the arguments have been getting so bad. It got so bad. It's like she said something. I don't even want to repeat it, but it, it was like a, a wake up call. It was a wake up call for me to go get help, like we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, uh, texting. I told her, I was like, if we make when we make it through this it's down to third um i think we should cut back on how much we text and facetime throughout the week so when we do talk it's like we have stuff to talk about um yep that's what um i got that advice from actually her mom uh yeah i have a close relationship with my in-laws and so uh they gave me that that advice and i think i think that it, sound it, advice yeah it's it's actually it's actually really, uh, it sucks because, you know, you want to talk to the person you love, but then it's smart because you want to, you want to uh, just be happy for what they're doing and and you want to have conversations when you guys talk instead of just freaking um, 
hey, what are you doing? Oh, uh, and then really very, very um, lackadaisical, lackadaisical conversation, making you feel like uh, they don't want to talk to you kind of deal, even though they do, but they just don't have much to say, you know what I mean? So, so did you, so like, do you write stuff down? So like something happens and like, do you write it down? You're like, I want to talk about this. So like, I'll be my um, I have, so I have like, I have pretty decent memory. I, I'm, That's good. Uh, so since it's like, I was like, hey, why don't we, for now, let's not talk until Thursday. That's what I said. But like moving forward, I kind of want to do like, maybe like talk every uh, Sunday to figure out what she did over the weekend. And then mm -hmm. we'll talk again on like Tuesday to figure out how work is going. Then we'll talk on Thursday to kind of see like how the week has been progressing and then let her have that Friday, Saturday, Sunday to go hang out, do whatever she wants with her friends. So when that Sunday comes around again, we can talk about whatever she did over the weekend. So we can just be excited for each other kind of deal. You know what I mean? So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, I think, like you just said, it was super sound advice and I didn't think about it that way. I thought, you know, it'll be hard to not talk to her. Mm -hmm. And it, it, don't get me wrong. I like, I want to text her like, hey, I love you. And I'm pretty sure I could, um, but I want to uphold my side of it and um, show her that I can do it. So that's why I was like. So that's, that's like very sound. So pretty much what uh, we're, we're doing, um, I, I decided because, how do I put this? So my wife would always feel like she would need to hang out with me and because like, we're married, like we love each other. We want to do stuff. I get it. I feel, I feel like I need to do stuff with her too, mm -hmm. but we all need our own time. And sometimes we forget that like as oh, people. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, another piece of advice, like I would give somebody who is just now starting a marriage is pretty much what you're doing. Give like set a lot of times for each other to have your own time. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes people would much rather sit on the couch with their spouse and watch a movie than go to the gym. Yeah, And like, I go to the gym when I get out of work because me and my brother built a gym in the basement. It's a, it's a bonding thing. Me and my brother do. He, right, right. He's helped me out so much with my like weightlifting and I do it after work. And instead of going to the gym at six o'clock when my wife's ready to go to the gym. Right. So now I'm like, between this time, this is your time. You do whatever you want with your time. I don't exist. I'm not even going to talk to you. Right. And if, if like we have a nice, calm, normal week, we adhere to it. But like the week, because life happens. Like, life happens, yeah. Yeah, you have, to, you have to flow with it. Yeah. And so the, the weeks that, the days that we're not crazy, she gets her time. And the days that we're crazy, we're crazy. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So just make sure you guys have a lot of time. It's yeah, man. It's great. You need to work on yourself. That's yeah. That's the biggest one. Like, like I'm like I, I'll, I'll be the first time. I'm not really afraid to say this, but like I, I had to reach out to the chaplain, try to like see see if he can help me uh, understand myself a little better. Um, I think uh, like um, I think that would work better for me, right? Because you can't. I'm starting to, I have a lot of time to self-reflect, put it like that, but um, I'm starting to understand that uh, you really can't do this on your own. I'm one to keep shit in. So anyway, mm -hmm. so, but, and I look, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, look how it turned out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really, um, I'm speaking in third person. I was like, you don't really uh, uh, display your emotions in the best way. It, yeah. comes, out, it comes out in anger when you, you're misunderstood. Um, so I have uh, a book for you. Is it is it called Misunderstood? No. <laughs> no. Um, it's called Cry Like a Man. I just finished reading it, and that's why I'm suggesting it. Um, yeah. it's, it's by Mr. Wilson. He, he, he blew up on social media not too long ago because of he, he was helping this little kid break a board in, I think it was karate. I, I forget what martial art it was. It was in some yeah, yeah, he, he wrote a book about emotion. Uh, he wrote two books. I have the second one right here. I'm just starting it, Battle Cry. But I read the first one. I loved it. Um, I'm not going to lie. The ending made me cry like a baby. It, it was very emotional. It was, it was good. Um, 
he he talks about a lot about men not showing emotion because mm. he grew up in Detroit where men 100% do not show emotion. Right, like right. It, it, it's a amazing book. Um, I recommend it. I, I'm, mm. I'm not recommending Battle Cry yet. I haven't yeah, read it. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I don't do that. I don't recommend stuff I haven't read. Oh, yeah, man, that's just, it's kind of been my my roller coaster of a year. It's it's been a year. I just, yeah, I can't wait to um, for her tour to end so we can kind of um, figure each other out a little bit more. Shall oh man, I, it'll be so much easier. Oh, you have no idea, man. I can't wait for that day to come. <laughs> is, is the place all set up and everything? But here in my apartment, yeah, yeah, man. yeah, everything's good to go. Um, but like when. She, when she gets done with her tour, uh, we're going to uh, Lake and Heath, England. So Ooh. that'll be fun. And we get to tour. We get to tour Europe. We get to do what she wants to do, which is travel. Um, but that's all dependent on if I don't make it to uh, uh, OTS. Uh, okay. Office. So yeah. So it's, it's 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 weird, right? You want your dreams to come true. I'm like, yes, I'm putting my package in. I'm 100 percent in. I'm going to be a pilot. This is what I want to do. I love my wife to death. I want to travel with her. <laughs> like that's, that's, yeah. that's me right now. Like, like if I don't make it, uh, which I'm highly sure I will, uh, cause I, I just like being confident about that one. Um, you if should I don't be. Make it, yeah. If I don't make it, I won't be mad. You know why? Cause I get to go tour the entirety of Europe with my wife. And that's what I really want to do. Cause I know that's going to make her happy. Right. Mm-hmm. And if, um, if I do make it, I know I'm not going to have the opportunity, but I'll have it later because you, I'm a freaking pilot. I'm pretty sure I'll yeah. fly her in an aircraft wherever she wants to go regardless. You know what I mean? So it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a catch 22, man. But uh, um, yeah, it's just mill to mill sucks. <laughs> sucks yeah. ass. But, I, uh, I it couldn't is. imagine. Yeah, it's what we signed up for. So it's, it, it's all good. I'm not mad. Yeah, so there was this I'm not going to name names because yeah, I, yeah. I don't do that. But there was this one staff sergeant that I worked with, and he was married mill to mill. And this was when I first joined, right? And so, like, I felt really bad for the guy because, like, he had a kid, he had, like, watcher, and, like, he still had to pull standby. So, like, if we got a call, we'd have to go fix something. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, like, supposed to be working on my own, but, like, I knew what I was doing. And yeah. so, like, he would call me and be like, hey, we got a call at this building, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, I, I got it. Don't worry about it. Take care of your kid. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, okay, sweet. Thanks. Come to find out, like, a week later, he's playing basketball with the boys from the shop. Oh. And it's just like, man, I had, like, so much faith in you because, like, this was, like, my first experience with, like, a really shitty, like, supervisor. Well, he wasn't yeah, my yeah. supervisor, but with a shitty high up. And I was just like, man, I can't believe you you did that. Like, yeah, man, that's a invasion of trust right there, dude. You yeah, just, I, like... I didn't trust him. And then he became my zone lead, and like he would tell me to do stuff, and then they'd be like, oh yeah, we're wicked busy. And then he's upstairs in his office watching recorded TV shows, and I'm just like, man, like at least have a package up, like in like. You have your tablet up watching recorded TV. The computer's not even on. Right, right. It was terrible. And yeah. nobody did anything about it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, mil- like, I don't want to say that's the military because, like, it, it really shouldn't be like that. But unfortunately, uh, there's people that kind of slide on by. Um, well, I mean, there's people like that everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's life. But definitely see, I definitely see a lot of people that, don't need to be in certain positions, but they're in that position. So you, I mean, you can't hate on them because they got it. But uh, at the same time, it's like, man, I, I think I know a, a handful of people that are more deserving of that position. So that's um, why I wasn't a big fan of the testing. I'm not yeah, a big fan I don't of like, testing. I don't like testing either, man. When I made it, oh gosh, I I fucking cried. <laughs> I was like, this is not, <laughs> I'm a terrible test taker, dude. So when I made it, I was I fucking cried. <laughs> so I, I tested once. Um, it was after I made, I made BTZ. Mm. And so I was able to test like Pretty my good. first cycle, like yeah. 
I was the cutoff date for BTZ in order to test. Mm -hmm. And so I some like they submitted my package and everything like for my bullets and I got my EPR back. I forgot what it was called. It was an EPR. It's been a minute. Um, EPR, yeah. yeah, EPR. And I just got three straight down the middle. And I'm just like, I made BTZ. Mm-hmm. That's that's not average. Yeah. Like at least give me a four. Like so yeah. I, I was I was really salty about that. Right. And then I tested. And I missed it by six points. Yep. Yep. I see. And that. I was I was just like, if they rated me fair, I would have made you, staff. You would have made staff. Yeah. And so like I talked to I talked to people about it and they're like, you was you were senior airman for three months. And I was like, I made BTZ. But like I got over it. Like I don't care huh. anymore. Yeah. It's 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 in the past, but that, that made me like hate the testing. That made me hate pretty much the whole EPR rating. It the was, EPR system is trash, dude. It's god awful. <laughs> oh yeah. And that was one of the other reasons why I was okay with getting like I was okay with getting out because I wasn't deployable. Mm. And I got sent on my deployment because people weren't deployable. Mm. I don't want to do that. I, I didn't want to do that. I, I was in the military so I could deploy. Right. If I cannot deploy, why am I going to be in the military? Yeah, because what, what ends up happening is since 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 person X is non-deployable. Uh, you get to push to the next person, person. Yeah, person Z, who might have all this stuff going on in their life, has to deploy because person X can't fill that spot. So uh, it, it's crappy, but, you know, at the same time, it's what we signed up for, so or something you know what i'm saying so but like i didn't want to i didn't want to be that person just no to, i get what you're saying dude. deployments come around and i'm just like ah yeah i don't have to worry about this and it's just right. like, no that's like you join the military do deploy you should be able to deploy. in reality you did because you know everybody everyone has that um mindset like oh i joined for school oh i joined for this some personal reason but in the, at the end of the day you, you kind of kind of join the deploy and go fight overseas i was going to say there's no way the military drops so, or the government drops so much money to train us first through basic all these different schoolings all these different trainings just, to, just yeah, for you to go to school there's no way there's <laughs> no. No. And there's people like that too that they, they, they just think they can um and they they do too they slide by and they don't get deployed and um mm-hmm. they kind of like take advantage of the system which is fine you know do you but I couldn't caught, live with myself. I, I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to look at myself in the mirror knowing that, nope. you know, and so I was more okay with looking at myself saying at least I deployed, I served, and I'm not just sitting on my ass feeding off the system. Right. Like it's I, I it, it was disgusting seeing people do that. And yeah. as a lower ranking, it made me be like, wow, military really isn't all that like amazing like i mean like the people in it isn't all that amazing because they put like we said these people in charge that shouldn't be in charge Mm -hmm. but when i was leaving it was starting to get better uh because you don't test for mass sergeant and up anymore correct you don't and they're looking to push that down to the staff and techs it's uh, they're looking to do it based off merit now kind of merit kind of um so you go up against a board for uh master starting up and uh they they rate your package and they rate you of what you've done through your career or you know what i'm saying so uh and then they give you that stripe or uh, or whatnot so it's becoming a it's becoming more merit-based than anything so um i mean it's better than tests it's, it's way better than tests but for now ncos like staff and techs you still got to test so uh, only a matter of time only yeah. a matter of time yeah the i've been i've been listening to kind of a lot between like the retired side and the enlisted side and even just the normal civilian side because they all like cohen the stuff oh, yeah. that happens in the civilian world that affects the military and oh yeah and um 
because I'm trying to get better at talking to people, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan talks to a lot of different people. And you can learn a lot of just talking to people if you're mm -hmm. just listening to people talk. Oh, but yeah. I was I was listening to this one guy and he he's the owner of it's called maps i forget what it actually stands for but they they test psychedelics for ptsd and the navy seals like the actual branch like of the navy seals donates a bunch of money to them because a bunch of retired navy seals go through them Mm -hmm. and to help with PTSD and stuff and MAPS is trying to get permission uh to start testing people with PTSD in the military with psychedelics because uh, they, they they found that the the way that certain psychedelics brings helps bring certain things to the surface of your brain it helps you deal with it more mm -hmm. And I can't get into the science of it. I'm not a scientist, right. but, but it's, if, if the military accepts this in like, they also do a lot of tests with like marijuana too, be, I, even though it's not a psychedelic. At all, but, in all actuality, um, I think, I think that would, cause here's my, here's my philosophy, right? I love philosophies. Alcohol probably the uh, not number one killer but very high you're very likely to die from alcohol poisoning or alcohol related incident or accident right correct uh, but it's legal mm -hmm. and you know the military has the stipulations on when you can drink before work this day and the third um but marijuana on the other side is illegal uh you really really don't hear too many deaths or stuff happening with marijuana and if you do it's on the most extreme cases um and all alcohol really does is destroy your brain i'm pretty sure marijuana does the same but it just destroys your personality destroys your brain it just destroys you as a person if you really think about it, you, people that are, are um alcoholics it just destroys yeah. you as, as a person um so i don't get why they, we keep feeding into alcohol especially in the military but not you know, looking into the the antidepressants of marijuana, like it can it can definitely bring a person down to a level of where they're actually calm. Like instead of being riled up like they are in alcohol, they're yep. calm. They're calm, relaxed. They could probably process their thoughts a little better instead of lashing out in anger and frustration when drinking. I don't know anyone who drinks and is calm. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Dude, my my philosophy on drug use is is crazy. Like I tell people this, and they're like, "What?" Um, I am one hundred percent against the war on all drugs. Mm. Um, there are successful people who do heroin. There are successful people who do cocaine, and successful people who do meth. Mm -hmm. And it's because they they use these substances just like other people use alcohol, like an adult. And if, and they, they get pure versions of it. And that's the problem because these version, because these drugs are illegal, there's a black market. Yeah, there is. Yep. And the people on the black market, they don't care. They, they'll take heroin and cut it with fentanyl pretty much all the way mm -hmm. because it's cheaper and fentanyl will kill you. Like yep. it yep. coming right. from Manchester, New Hampshire, like, I saw it. Like, yeah, read it, it, every, we would, read it every day nowadays too. So, yeah, I remember back in 2016 when President Trump came through. He he called man he called Manchester, New Hampshire, a drug forsaken den. Like it was, yeah, it was crazy. And so that that's that's kind of why I'm against the laws of drugs because if. Yes, you have doctors that do the do like the opioid crisis that happened because of doctors. They were just over prescribing people. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it really comes down to the individual. How you use it. It's like anything else. How you use yeah. it. Yeah. How do you use it? Like, 
if you want to be a you know like unhealthy you're gonna overuse fast food if you want exactly if you become an alcoholic it's probably because you overuse alcohol if you become cracked out of your mind it's because you probably overuse an opioid you know what i mean so and like i i when when i get injured i try not like and i go to the doctors i try not to accept high right. painkillers because oh, like, i like like i know i like them mm-hmm. and it's I, and like I, I i would use them if i need to like mm-hmm. when i got my wisdom teeth out oh man but as soon as i was as soon as i knew i was done i i gave them back and they were like mm-hmm. you can finish them like they told me to finish them and i was like no i don't yeah. want them right and they were like oh okay and i was like why are you just trying to make me take these like right. i don't i'm done with them and it's because i'm an adult i can use these substances in an adult way and not be stupid right well, that's, and um what's it called uh it's, it's self-control a lot of yep. people don't have self-control so and it's I'm not a big believer in the government telling me what to do. It's weird because I joined the military. I know. <laughs> but as, as a civilian, I don't enjoy the government telling me what to do. I, right. I, I like being given the information and being, being able to make my own choice. Right. Like, I, I don't do heroin because I do not. I said that wrong. I do not. I don't do heroin. But I don't do it because it's not legal i do it because i don't want to get addicted no, I get it. you want to make your own choices yeah yeah and it's just like i'm pretty sure i can walk down the street and buy hell but right. i don't want to right and it's just like i'm an adult let me make my own decision and a lot of places are raising the tobacco age That's like like, yep and it's like okay when are we going to raise the age to join the military you're not they're not and they're trying to lower the age for voting. And it's like, it, you, you're not making sense with anything things, that you guys yeah, are doing. Here's why I, so here's why, here's why I, I stay away from two things. I stay away from the news and then I stay away from politics because yep. nothing makes sense. When, when you hear some people talk, the shit that comes out of their mouth, it's like you have a room full of other adults that heard you say this before you came on national TV and say this, like, and nobody stopped you from <laughs> like, are you serious right now? No that one is very true. You. Yeah. Saying this shit. And it, it just causes mass confusion amongst people. And then it causes division at that too. So I just mm-hmm. stay away. From it. So stay how away. do you get your news? What's that? So how do I get my news? Uh, Intel brief from the military. Okay. Cause I know that's real. <laughs> that's, that's, I know that's yeah. real. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I don't like, I'm not saying like, oh, fuck the news. Um, like I'll like, I'll like hear stuff and I'll see it like if it's on TV, but I'm not going out of my way at certain points in the day to go watch the news. Right. Because yeah. I know they're, they're just feeding, uh, they're feeding fear. They're yep. feeding division. And then they're feeding a bunch of bullshit. If you really ask me, uh, but I get my shit from the Intel brief in the military because that's like, that's the purest form of information you can get. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah. I I understand that. I, and like that's, and people hear this stuff on the news and like they'll hear something on CNN and they'll be like, Oh, this is terrible. But like, they don't research it on their own. Like they don't do any more like looking into it. And then Fox will have the same exact story, but spun completely good. Mm-hmm. And so now these people are like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then yep. they're not doing the research. And it's just like. A- and then you get a bunch of experts that don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. And then you have all these analysts that go through and they analyze it and they, they like break it down more. And it's just like, yo, there was just a cat stuck in the tree. Like why are people protest? And it's just like, it's, it's so the problem it goes from one extreme to another. It's stupid. The problem is people like information quickly. They don't like to do the work themselves. Um, exactly. I'm not gonna lie. I use this shit a lot, right? But information, people like information very quickly nowadays. And uh, the first, the first thing they hear that doesn't sit right with their stomach, they're gonna react to it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
people don't like you said people don't do research anymore i'm, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite i'm not gonna sit here and tell you i do research on everything i hear because i don't uh it's I do impossible on, to do research yeah on i do research on things i want to know about right so i don't try i try my best not to get riled up with too much stuff that i hear in the media um i get more riled up when i hear people talk about it like they fucking did 80 hours and six papers about it <laughs> so i don't i don't really get too much into that but like for instance, man, like the stuff that was going on in Afghanistan, pulling people out of Afghanistan, this and the third. I'm not going to repeat what was said in the intel brief, but you hear what the news says, CNN, mm -hmm. Fox, and then you hear what the intel brief says, and then you're just like, hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. wow. You know what I mean? It's, so it's completely different. It's, and that's one thing I learned in the military is what, what you learned in the, what you see in the news and what, is actually going on is completely actually, different because everybody has a everybody has an agenda and they're trying to meet that agenda mm -hmm. uh, 100%, the, man. 100%. and it's it's been it's shown that ever since um like biden gotten into office cnn's rating has gone down because they're not yelling about trump anymore so now people aren't angry yelling at their tv with cnn that trump's a terrible person and it was like that's the media for you man if they can find yeah. a way to invoke emotion they're gonna they're gonna stick with it they're gonna stick with it they're gonna run with it I, and oh honestly if the news started showing like cop chases again and and, and car chases and and cats and dogs and shit like that i'd watch it i'd i'd Dude, turn the news back on the the one, one of the most one, one of the things i hated most that happened because of all these good I, i'm going to say good i'm, I'm hesitating because i don't want to like misspeak mm -hmm. um all these movements that have happened are really good like black lives matter not mm -hmm. everything that has happened has been good but it, it's a good idea but in like defund the police it's it's not a bad idea it's not a good idea it needs to be refined but they got rid of cops that's all i care about Forget about all that other stuff. <laughs> they got rid of cops. And it's just like, man, I love that TV show. Like yeah, that was a funny TV show, man. It and and it was because show. of all these movements and like everybody hated cops. And it's just like, but nobody hated the TV show cops. So the problem is when um that I'm seeing is when people don't like something, they completely remove it. So that you mm -hmm. know what they I hate to I hate to sound like um like I'm old, but it's making a lot of people soft. And a lot of people, there's no, there's nothing wrong with being soft and sensitive, right? But when when you can't deal with reality correctly, that, yeah. that's what ended up happening. People think life is freaking social media. People think life is Instagram. People think life is Facebook. People think life is Twitter. Uh, it's not, um, life is real, you know what I mean? So no, I. I, I stopped saying that because people got like mad at me and because they, they don't understand what I was trying to say. Like, it's not making you soft, like, oh, you're going to cry. It's making you soft, like, man, a TV show shouldn't make you angry. Like, I don't know. Like, um, people were trying to cancel Eminem for a while and that was funny. I mean, them says some shit but it's yeah. funny it's so me it, to me it's funny as fuck right well, but so like go ahead, go ahead. When, when when one person doesn't like it what are they gonna do try to cancel them. so i remember I, i've gone down a lot of rabbit holes like of eminem because growing up i liked eminem and so i've gone down a lot of youtube rabbit holes of like interviews with him and stuff mm. and it, it was funny because he would sit there and make fun of gay people and like have all these like homophobic slurs in his songs. And, but then he turns around and does a song with Elton John. Yeah. Yeah. And then he does the interview. The, 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 I, yeah, about, yeah. And he's like, I'm gay. And he's in his, and it's just so <laughs> funny because he spent his whole career making like, he's like, wait, those aren't, those aren't homophobic slurs. That's me saying I want to do this. And it's man, it, it was the funniest thing ever. Oh, man. They're all freaking out clip. because Eminem's gay. <laughs> yeah. Eminem's gay. Eminem's gay. <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah. But yeah, man, yeah. like um a lot of so I okay, here for instance, it's okay to cancel bad people. I feel like that's okay. Cancel bad, like R. Kelly. You just can't go around peeing on people. You can't go around. You can't go around trafficking little girls. It's just it's wrong. It's, it's gross. It's disgusting, right? Cancel yeah. R. Kelly, right? But don't cancel like like um he's Eminem like he just used that because he during that time in history in music you could say that stuff. You can get away with it. You can rap about it. You can talk about it. This then you can say that stuff in that time period when he was rapping. Now, 2020, 2021, someone didn't like something Eminem said in 2005, and they're trying to cancel him. Does mm-hmm. that make any sense? Like, but one, one even better, uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart almost got canceled because he made a gay joke on Twitter. And in what year? What year was that gay 20, joke? Like? I think it was 29. 20, 2009. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 29, 2009. Um, but and it was funny because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, one, he's a comedian. He's a comedian. Like he's gonna crack jokes. When when I hear when I hear comedians talk, I don't take anything they say seriously. Unless yeah. like every time I see like a comedian tweet, I don't expect it to be serious. I don't take anything a comedian says seriously. Like mm-hmm. unless if they're being one hundred percent like when Joe Logan's sitting down talking to somebody. And like they're not laughing, they're having a real conversation. Yeah, I pay attention, and I'm not yeah. like, oh. But then, like, when I I can tell a difference between a joke and not a joke. Right. And people people lost that somehow. I don't. Oh, they lost they lost that ability very quickly. Like it happened within a matter of like five years. Yeah, I don't know how. Like all these people, we grew up on we grew up on South Park. We we grew up on still, all these like terrible shows. <laughs> Dude, South Park's hilarious. Uh, the the that. pandemic special. Oh my god! Amazing. Like, like Integrity Farms. <laughs> the, the, my my favorite was the. Uh, it was after that episode. They they apologized to China, and I, 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 I don't. I yeah. I, I don't care about making fun of China. I'm probably banned from China. So, but yeah, they 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 made fun of China dictator for looking like Winnie the Pooh. And then the apology letter, it was even better. It was like, oh, yeah, we like money and capitalism just as much as you. So here's our apology letter. So you can keep selling our stuff in your country. Yep. Yep. And it's just like, man, these are the same guys that really did show up to the MTV Music Awards on acid and dresses. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are hilarious, man. They don't pull any punches. That's why, that's that's honestly why I like that show. uh, yeah, they don't pull any punches. They just, they, they don't care who you are either. They'll nope. make fun of you. And then you either laugh about it now or laugh about it later. They don't care if you're sad about it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. And the I'm Simpsons, sure. they're, they're pulling characters because it's not PC. They're, yeah, it's not political. Same thing with Family Guy. Dude, I love Family Guy, but it's it's not the same like it was, let's say, like, oh, no. 10 years ago, right? Because Family Guy went through this big thing about, um, they're trying to pull back on the the homophobic jokes in this day. Let me be first to say I don't I don't care if you're gay or not. Like if you're a good no. person, you're a good person, right? Yeah. But you know, sometimes That's the shit joke. is funny. Yeah. Sometimes the shit is funny. Like there's no other way to put it, right? Sometimes the shit is funny, uh, and life is funny, and people take life too fucking seriously. What um, was his name? Bruce, right? I'm I'm pretty sure his name was Bruce. The uh, um I'm from Family right. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, him. It is Bruce, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That guy? Yep. Yeah, he was hilarious. Like, he was a good character. Like, he's, he's, I think he's still in it. Uh, but I hope they so. I haven't seen the new episodes. They, they don't really, not as much as they used to, basically. That's sad. But, like, I, I believe, um, I believe his name is Apa from simpsons the guy who uh, owned uh, yeah yeah he I, I believe they took him out and so pretty much what happened was disney hired a bunch of all these new people to be more pc and then they started being more pc and people who have been watching the shows forever they started complaining and then they started firing all these people because they're too pc and so 
Disney is slowly kind of getting back to not so PC. But so I, I feel think... like go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. I was gonna say I feel like there's gonna be always a certain level that cooperations are gonna to have to maintain of to course. be able to stay afloat. Of course. And I feel like that level is set too high. I think you need a healthy mix. You need a yes. healthy mix of political correctness and a healthy mix of funny, right? Because you become too politically correct. The shit's not funny anymore, right? Nope. All right, and you become too funny. The, don't get me wrong. There is such a thing as being offensive, to, yes. to, to other people i'm 100 percent. i agree with that 100 percent. you can be offensive by being a little bit too funny so you need that healthy balance but that political it's it's up here like you said it's way way up there so it's hard to find that balance sometimes with being funny without getting like, canceled. <laughs> like i don't see a problem because like for instance south park makes fun of everybody they, they don't they don't miss they had a whole episode about pc principal beating up cripple kids love it like what? who else would do that and he was like i'm not doing this because you're a cripple but i'm doing it because you're a cripple because if i didn't do it it would be discrimination <laughs> and it's just like well he's not <laughs> wrong like but it that that see it's funny like that type of stuff is funny and then you get i i don't even i don't watch tv like tv tv anymore like I stream yeah. everything, so I only watch yeah. stuff that like I want to watch. Yeah. So it's it's hard to even like point stuff out anymore. Of so for what's me, I just, for me, it's just sports. That's that's all. Like I have like Sling TV, which is TV, but it's still streaming. I can still do what I want and and move around like I want, right? And that's I have cool. Hulu, Netflix, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like Hulu Live, basically. Um, okay. Uh, but. I don't watch cable. It's like no point in watching cable for me. Cable is going to be a thing of the past. And it's kind of exciting because cable is stupid expensive. Um, we we but, do that package deal that Hulu has with Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus. So that's three yeah. streaming services. And sometimes I watch fights on ESPN, but mm -hmm. not often. But it was only like $15. The thing about the thing about streaming services is funny you say that. Yeah, cable is gonna be a thing of the past, but the amount of streaming services you're gonna have to keep up with what cable used to provide for you is gonna equate to the same amount as cable. One yeah. day, one, one day, because now you have like Paramount uh, has its own uh, thing now. Like Disney has its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Netflix, Hulu, uh, and then. Uh, there's some other stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head, but all these networks that are going away from cable to keep up with the times, you're going to be like, oh, this is only streaming on Paramount. Now I got to go get Paramount for $7.99 a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it'll just all start equating. So I, we've, we've been strong with just the ones we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Netflix, Hulu, um, Disney. I don't. I don't think I have ESPN downloaded on my new PlayStation yet. I, I yeah. got. I got a new PlayStation. I don't think I have it downloaded yet. Um, and we have some of Peacock free because of my internet. Mm -hmm. But we've been we've been holding off on buying other stuff because I don't want to have all these different streaming services. And the only other one I want is Paramount Plus, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, see, I want it too, man. I was looking at it the other day, like, ah, oh, this will be I don't, I don't want it yet because I don't really care about what's on it. It's what's coming to it is what I'm super excited for. Yeah. Um, the Avatar universe, they they brought back uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, really? They brought, yeah, they brought back all the original creators. And they were like, you have your own universe. Do what you will. What? And so... They're supposed to be releasing uh, Kiyoshi, a Kiyoshi movie. I don't know how much you know about the Avatar universe. Um, I'm reading one of their books right now. I, I love that. I love that show. I've, I've never like, I actually like dove into the universe, but. Um, uh, oh, it's crazy. It's huge. Oh, it's massive. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no. It's, 
like obviously when you're watching Avatar, the, the Last Airbender, you get a little a hint of uh, the the other uh, previous Avatars in this, that, and the third, but you actually don't get to dive into it too much with the show. So, I meant the Kyoshi book. Uh, what is it called? The first one is called The Rise of Kyoshi, and the second one is The Shadow of Kyoshi. Um, and it pretty much starts from the beginning of her time, and it pretty much talks about her growing up and then her becoming the avatar and yada, yada, yada. And the how in-depth they go, how clear they are, it's amazing. It, I can't believe they write as good as they do. Yeah. But they're supposed to be coming out with a movie for her, and I'm just waiting for that. I'm not giving them my money yet. They don't have anything I want to see. Yeah, no, it's gonna it's gonna be epic. I'll probably get it to watch it and then delete it. I say that now. I'll get it to watch <laughs> it, and but I'll forget about it and still have it and have seven ninety nine coming out of my account every month and not really think about it. Um, That's how they get you because it's only seven ninety nine. You're That's not exactly. gonna notice it. Oh, reminder for everybody who's listening to this: delete, deactivate your free account. Deactivate your free account because I have one coming up in like four or five days i have a, I actually have a reminder on my phone i forgot there you go uh, set, set reminders that's uh, i don't know why more people don't do that i love reminders dude if i didn't do it i forget i like i have a good memory but certain like small things i forget and i'm just like oops <laughs> why like amazon fucking amazon dude that yearly subscription yeah, it'll be uh, mine comes out in July. It's like 115 bucks. I'll just be sitting around. It'll be July. Yeah, they have a military uh, discount. I do they? Yeah, it oh. it drops it. Yeah, it. I, I have a student one now because I go to school, but they have, just so you know, they have a military discount. Oh, I fucking know. They don't advertise that shit. I didn't even go looking either. I'm just. I've been. Yeah. I've had it for like since I was. I don't know. High school. <laughs> Every. Every site that like I buy stuff from, I look because yeah. why not? It's, it, it's I, I already have an account with the with the site that I signed up for. It ID me. Right. So all, all the major sites use that. So it's, oh, I know, I know, I know what site you're, you're talking about. I've heard about it. I've seen yeah. it. I think I started doing it and I got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, I, I did called? it for a workout program. To get a um, workout program for free when I was in the military. What's it called? ID me. ID me. Yeah. Is it yeah. like a green logo? Oh, I do not know. I haven't like been on the site in forever. I made a site. Yeah. It's green, yeah. green and white. Oh, so I'm right. Yeah. It, it's it's great. It's one like after you submit like all the paperwork they ask for. In order mm -hmm. to like verify your stuff with other websites, it's literally just one click. One it's click. just yeah, and they normally just give you a discount code. And most places, uh, if you if you don't see a discount code anywhere, if you're just like if you send them an email and give them the order number, and you're like, hey, I'm in the military. Here's the order number. I right. give you proof if you want it. Most times they don't ask, and they just give you fifteen percent back. Yeah, and it's. I, uh, look into it. I think I was being lazy. <laughs> a, a lot of people in like dependents, you guys can like use discounts too, and people call me cheap for doing it, and it's not. I'm. It's not that I'm cheap. I. There. It's there. I I joined the military. I did that. I'm now a veteran. The, it's a veteran discount <laughs> like i don't know exactly like, that's not the way you could put it you you don't call old people cheap for using a senior discount <laughs> it is yeah. yeah it's it's 10 to 15 percent and yeah. depending on like restaurants i normally tip that anyway so i like it, it comes right back out to the total yeah uh. nah man wow we've been going at it what time did we start like 6 15 it's eight it's almost eight o'clock oh yeah you're on the east. so it's seven. I am. 
Yeah. Yeah. Man, Benji, I appreciate it. No doubt, dude. I, anytime, anytime, man. You just hit me up. Let me know. Um, we'll have to come on. Keep talking to you. Um, yeah, this is fun. It's actually kind of good to talk. Uh, talk dude, mental that, health. That one was big. Um, dude, this is one of the reasons why I want to do this with people, and this is why I'm trying to get more people that like I know to come on, right. because I'm hoping if more people see like normal people on, more people want to come talk. Mm. And a lot of people don't really have a space to talk freely. No, you're right. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit here and yell at you because I disagree with you. Right. I could, I care about what you think, but I could care less in, in the same sense. Like, I want to mm -hmm. hear what you think, but I don't care so much that it's going to change my opinion on you or right. I'm going to argue you because I want people to feel safe to come here and be like, He's going to have a real conversation with me. He's going right. to make me think. And that's, that's the goal. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Man, keep doing your thing. Uh, this is this is, this is going to be on your Facebook, right? Yeah, it's going to be on my Facebook. Uh, I'll share it whenever. Clip, that, clip the mental health part, and I'm going to post Do that it. so people can see that, man. Do it up. You, you can have all the rights to this, too. I don't really... I, I don't know how any of it works. I no, no I it's think. a lot of paperwork, and I don't think you want to you want to go down that rabbit hole. I mean, you you, you do one day once it gets as big as you want it. To. <laughs> but uh, yeah, right right now it's uh it's a lot of, a lot of paperwork, a lot of a lot of buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of rights. <laughs> uh, you you can you can use this clip. You can use all of this all you want. It's all it's right, on the sure. video, so people will hear it. I don't know yeah. the legal stuff, but I'll share it. I'll definitely share it, man. I'll clip yeah. it. And and, and I'll tag you, man. I'll get the word out there so you get more. Do you have anything on. you want to promote before you leave? You have promote? a platform. Uh, I don't. I do, but I haven't used it in a couple of days. Uh, but I'm not going to promote that. What I am going to promote, though, is uh, take care of your responsibilities at home. Your job is a job. Your wife is very important, and she matters. Right. Your, your significant other matters not oh, yes, just your wife other. yeah Thank you. whatever you want to get married to a toaster do you it matters just keep it away from a bathtub please keep it uh whatever you want to do with that toaster you do you i'm not tell you what to do because you're a grown adult uh, there you but go. Yeah, that's all i'm gonna promote man just uh just take care of yourself take care of your family all right so. benji thank you so much for being on my show episode number 25 Oh, uh, yeah, man. Fuck yeah. 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 It's great. 25. <laughs> well, we can legally rent a car. Holy hey, shit. That's crazy, isn't it? Why don't you get me back on here on episode 50 so I could be 25 and 50? <laughs> 75 and 100, too. Why not? Yeah. My, every 25 episodes, man, get me on. <laughs> All right, guys. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Send me a message if you want to be on. We can Zoom like this. If you're in my state, we're close. We can... I, I'll even drive to you. We can sit outside and talk. I don't care. Benji, again, thank you. It's been no a problem, pleasure. Dude. Anytime.